Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com here with a radical PvP build one bar on a Templar. You might call it Stam, you might call it Magic, some may call it Hybrid. Now, I'm going to show you how to use the new Oak and Soul Ring in a one bar Stamplar build that absolutely melts. Super tanky, super fast, crazy high burst healing, and unbelievable damage. Plus, with the Oak and Soul Mythic, it's extremely easy to play. Even I can do it. I'm going to show you gear sets for the Mythic, No Mythic, and where wolf options in case you want to use that champion points gear skill and more let's start stamplar aka magpar aka hybrid this is what it looks like so we're locked in a one bar build what would you use on a templar have a couple different options i chose to use biting jabs and use stamina and lean on stamina for damage puncturing sweeps heals you but i feel like biting jabs and dodge rolls is a good use for my stamina the major brutality and major sorcery is a little bit redundant but the biting jabs just hit so hard with physical damage and that's what i'm going to use for the damage component rather than puncturing sweeps on this guy big huge aoe right in front of you so the more targets you hit the more more damage you're gonna do this is so high in damage you don't need to execute making the templar the god of one bar builds because you just need one button and that's jabs so that's what biting jabs is gonna do be our main spammable be our execute and basically give you all our damage primarily now for the main spammable heal i actually use honor the dead for restoring light this is a very high cost magic based burst heal with a 28 meter radius it's gonna do a super burst heal and it's gonna restore some magic over the next six seconds so you actually have a little bit better sustain with this resolving vigor if you use that it's just not bursty enough to come back from a huge high damage meta that we are in right now the downside is sometimes it does to go to another player since it's single target but most times when you're really low this will pop you back up i'm getting 14 to 15 thousand crit heals in cyrodiil with this thing Great sustain too at 4,300. You don't want to spam it, but it'll do a lot for you. And the reason you don't want to spam it is your heal over time necessarily isn't resolving vigor. It's living dark. This is going to put a bubble on you. Initially, I thought living dark got nerfed not so fast now it lasts 12 seconds you still get healed every half second and this thing can crit running high crit damage and crit healing will make this heal nearly as much as it did last time plus it lasts twice as long and it's a thousand times easier to sustain it i love living dark and completely overreacted uh, this skill is absolutely fantastic now in its current form another reason living dark and having a dawn's wrath ability on our bar is so relevant is two specific passives one illuminate casting the dawn's wrath grants minor sorcery so believe it or not on a quote-unquote hybrid stamplar or whatever you want to call it we're going to use spell damage glyphs on our jewelry because playing solo we can always get this increasing our spell damage by 10 percent and we're not relying on someone else to use this so yes we're using stamina abilities to spam our main damage ability but with the hybridization it doesn't matter whatever's highest is where the damage is going to come from even if it's physical doesn't matter spell damage is going to be higher and the reason why is because we pick illuminate next up up is prism this gives us ultimate back when we use a dawn's wrath ability so we're going to generate a ton of ultimate so living dark again from the dawn's wrath is going to be like our heal over time every half second we're going to heal like an absolute hammer and use honor the dead just to burst us back up and then psychic order race against time this thing does a lot for us it gives us crazy fast movement speed but minor force with the oak and soul ring i'll get to a little bit later we are going to have major force so we're going to do big crit damage and actually raise our crit up quite a bit because of this it also is going to make us immune to snares and immobilization so we can zip on out with major expedition in this pretty low cost and we're going to be using the wretched vitality gear set which i'll touch on a little bit later and this gives you basically both a major and a minor buff so it gives you pretty much a hundred percent uptime on your resources to end with your five piece gear set can't say enough about race against time and then last ability up comes from Adric Spear, and that's Binding Javelin. I prefer this over Toppling Charge. Reason being, it does physical damage, and number two, it ignores resistances and has a 22 meter range. And you cannot block this thing. So all of them Dragonites just sitting there hunkering down, blocking. You hit this, drop their block, and hit them with the big Dawnbreaker in the face to kill them. This is what you set up your combo. Speaking of combo, the reason I go with a two-hander, a couple different things and the reason why. Number one is the passive follow-up. I fully charge a heavy attack 
attack and my next direct damage is going to hit for 10% harder. So it's a way you can get a lot more damage out of a Dawnbreaker fully charging, heavy attacking, then bang, landing it. Another reason is Battle Rush, increasing your stamina recovery by 30% after killing a target for 10 seconds. Those two things make the 2H really strong on this because it's going to help our resource sustain. It's going to help for big, huge nukes. And with that follow-up passive, the way to do it is kind of set up your target with the stun. And if they don't break CC fast, you're going to fully charge really three quarters of the charge to get it to proc. And then you're going to land a Dawnbreaker or a Smiting. This is our ultimate choice. Does physical damage, stuns enemies, hits in a cone, and it's really low ultimate cost. The downside of having a one bar build is this. You can't have multiple ultimates. So you can't have an offensive and a defensive. A Dawnbreaker I use defensively to peel away if people are chasing me down and hit them. Okay, now how do we actually use this? So here's a target dummy. And the way to use this is hit this right here. Race against time. Get your minor force. You have bigger crits. Now you can also hit Living Dark because you're probably going to take pressure when you go in there. The trick is to follow up and try to land the heavy as you see that fist in the air in the bottom middle of my screen. That fist in the air is the follow up passive right there. You see it again and it consumes it if I do a light attack right following it. It's about three quarters down and then bang it lands and it procs. So again, you don't always are able to do a fully charged heavy attack, but if you can CC someone, rivet back and then all of a sudden bang. It consumes the fully charged heavy into 10% extra damage and then you're doing about one, two sweeps. If you can't kill someone in about three to four jabs, you need to peel back. What I mean by peel back is hit race against time to get your mobility, hit your bubble up and evaluate if you need to use honor the dead for a burst heal. Use a combination of your potions and ultimates. Use your ultimate to stun someone and peel away. Use your potion to pop that, get huge flood of resources across the board and zip on out to heal and live to fight another day. So people always wanted to ask about Flexbot. Why am I not using this? Why am I not using that? A couple different Flexbots you could use is one is Extended Ritual as a defensive. It's going to cleanse negative effects, but with Plague Break out there, you might get nuked. Plus it costs enormous amount of magic. So you would have to change out your skills for that. Another one is Purifying Light. If the spell damage enchants, the tooltip on this is huge and it's a great bursting tool. I have experimented with Purifying Purifying Light instead of the Jab one as a CC, but then you're totally dependent on Dawnbreaker for a CC. You will have more burst on single target, but I'd like to be able to drop block and set up people for a nuke. But those are two good flex options if you want. So let's take a look at the first gear chart here, and we're rocking a five-piece Order's Wrath, five-piece Wretched Vitality. We'll look at the traits. I'm going reinforced in the chest, heavy, three heavy, three medium, one light, with well fitted on the rest of them. The big slots, that's head, chest, and legs. I go prismatic, the rest stamina. We look at the weapon. It's a weapon damage and actually a spell damage enchant. 2H, mace, and sharpen for the max amount of penetration. 2 swift makes us a little bit faster with all spell damage enchants. And 1 infuse spell damage enchant will get us to about 6,000, 6,500 self buff. First item set up, we have Order's Wrath. This is a high aisle. Three trait, craftable set. You can also buy it from the traders or your buddies can craft it for you and get it. It's going to increase your crit damage and crit healing at the five piece. The reason this is so strong is it's not a named buff. So it stacks with minor and major force. So you're going to run a little bit higher crit and you're going to run a high bit crit damage for really high burst. Pretty much everyone is switching out to high crit chance because of this set and others. So I'm going to run Reinforce in the chest. Don't even have it golded out with Prismatic Glyphs. The rest of the traits on the armor, I'm going to go with Well Fitted. And the Maul is what I'm going to go with with the Two-Hander. That is golded out. And I'm going to go with the Sharpen trait with a Weapon and Spell Damage Enchant on the front, which I have experimented with Poisons. But I like the Burst comboing with a Fully Charged Heavy Attack, proccing extra Weapon Damage and Spell Damage into a DB. Now we have Oaken Soul. This is the core. I use one Infuse on the Oaken Soul and two Swift on the other Jewelry. The reason this is so strong, it just gives you a bunch of buffs. It gives you your Weapon and Spell Damage buff, your Crit buff, major protection. It's going to give you the minor sustain so you can stack with the major sustain using a tripod. It's also going to give you major berserk, major courage, and major force. It carries your damage and survivability and sustain in a one piece and makes the bar and thing extremely simple. I was very skeptical on it, but not anymore. Ogun Soul, definitely worth getting. You struggle with the leads, I have a video and a link in the description below on how to get this mythic and why it's so important. We got Oak and Soul, we got Order's Wrath. Next set up, talked about a Wretched Vitality. And the too long didn't read here on this set, five pieces. And if you have a major and minor buff at the same time, it carries your resource sustain. Having Oak and Soul on, which gives you a major and minor buff, does not actually activate this. You need to activate a skill. 
Jabs and or Race Against Time will activate this, keeping about 100% uptime. So if we get in combat here and we use a tri potion, we'll give you the major resource sustain. Let's get in combat. You can see those two procs down there. They're yellow. I'm going to use a potion too quick. Let's see what our recovery is. 2400 stam and 2200 magic with 1100 health recovery. I'm at 6,000 spell damage. So you have a ton of resource sustain, both in stamina to do jabs and dodge roll and spear someone, to use living dark race against time and honor the dead. So if I'm running two five pieces and I'm running a oak and soul mythic that leaves room for one piece and I go with magma incarnate, it gives you magic recovery and stamina recovery across the board, which is extremely useful. Now, if you don't have magma incarnate, you can use something that gives you resource recovery. Uh, Baron Thirst is another one piece item that does the exact same thing. If you don't have Order's Wrath, what I would do is go with another DPS set, kind of like Deadly Strikes, which is really good for Templars, whether it's Stam or Magic. Plague Break, another alternative all around, really good that comes in medium armor. A great craftable option is New Moon Acolyte, giving you a ton of weapon damage and it's craftable. And then Spriggans is a great penetration set for no proc, no CP. Wretched Vitality, if you're not going to use Wretched Vitality, you need something super defensive and sturdy. One set I'd run is Iron's Blood. It's the most mitigation possible, though you'll lose a lot of resources. Number two is Mark of the Pariah. Good something on at all times, giving you a ton of armor. And number three, don't sleep on Buffer of the Swift, reducing your damage by 10%. It's not a name buff, so it stacks on top of major and minor protection as well. And then also Amber Plasm, believe it or not, another dungeon set that gives you resource recovery across the board and is great for a hybrid build. So if you don't have the Oak and Soul Mythic, what would you go with? Torque is actually really good for resource sustain. Death Dealer's Fate is great for high max stats. Mark and Ring of Majesty is really good offensive and defensive potential. And then if you want to play something at super high speeds, you could always go with the Wild Hunt. With the no mythic option, what I would do is use two five pieces to primarily for defensives at all time. Mark of the Pariah. This comes from Arsidium Rothgar, or you can buy it on the Traders, and it's just going to give you a lot more resistances the lower health you get. Very, very easy to get a hold of. And then Daedric Trickery. This is going to allow you to get a lot of really, really good defensive buffs, and they stack on top of each other. Very useful for survivability, because you're going to need it if you're not going to bar swap, and you're not going to have Oaken Soul to carry you. And then also, I would go with Engine Guardian. The reason I go with Engine Guardian is one is acts as a decoy, Two, it carries your survivability without the need for a mythic. And then I would run a combination of three heavy, three medium, and one light, just like I would on this build. And you should be pretty survivable. So basically, every stamina build can play a werewolf. Just in case you want to play a werewolf and you want to use this build to maybe do in between. Here's the skills that I would run. Feral Pounce as a Glap Closer. Cursing's Bounty. This gives you a big burst heal. Deafening Roar, which sets enemies off balance and fears them, drops their block. Howl of Agony, which is your main spamble going in front of someone is where you want to face right in front of them. And then Claw of Life, your damage over time that also acts as a heal. The gear sets that I would run and considered meta right now is Dragon's Appetite that gives you a ton of healing. And then also Savage Werewolf that does a lot of damage for light and heavy attack stacks and then run an oaken soul ring and a magma incarnate and you're good to go now let's touch on the miscellaneouses uh this build and we'll jump into champion points there's a couple different racial choices that you can pick me personally i'm actually on an orc the reason orc is so strong is you can increase max stamina with brawny unflinching rage increasing your max health and also healing you which is cut in half in battle spirit but is very useful and then swift reducing the cost of your sprint speed increasing movement speed sprint bonus by 10%, also increasing your weapon and spell damage. So the Swift Warrior makes you hit like a truck and zoom away. Great for major expedition and playing solo. Another great race is the Imperial. That's going to give you a bunch of max stats and reduce cost. It's going to reduce cost of everything. Blocking, dodging, sprinting, magic abilities, and stamina abilities. I would consider those top tier and pick whatever you like best. For consumables and potions, I go with the Essence of Health, Tri Stat, or Tri Potions. Giving me health, magic, magic and stamina. You'll notice that potions have a 45 second cooldown and this is 47.6 amount of recovery. So you want to use them on cooldown. Reason you want to use them on cooldown is here the alchemy medicinal use makes them last 30% longer. These potions stack on top of the minor buffs we're already getting. So we're getting minor endurance, minor intellect, minor fortitude, but you can stack it with major. 
So you can stack another 30% recovery on top of what you already have from using O Console, giving you a ton. That's how I'm able to get over 2,000 stamina and magic recovery. When we look at attribute points, I actually have 64 in the health, and I don't recommend that for everybody. Reason why is I get ganked constantly on screen. So having a huge max health pool is better than having a lot of mitigation with the Chlorians Nightblaze everywhere watching. If I were you watching this and you weren't getting ganked on stream every single day, I would go 32 and health 32 into stamina aim for around 32,000 health regardless of your champion points cp munda stone whatever that seems to be the sweet spot dump the rest into stamina now we have munda stone choice i run the thief munda stone in pvp yes it's making a comeback reason why i have the almost 40 percent spell and weapon critical my crit multiplier is very high and that's 54 percent with a base of 50 right around 104 percent if I use the buff here, Race Against Time, guess what? It goes up another 10%, so I hit very, very hard. Another alternative is Warrior, which is halfway decent, but Shadow if you want the most burst possible. What I'm going to use for food is Smoked Bear Haunch. It's going to increase our max health by the most value. Health recovery, stam recovery, and mag recovery for a ton. Another alternative that you can use is called Jewels of Mystery. This is basically a cheaper version. Doesn't have nearly the health, but has recovery across the board. Is what is a great alternative. You can't afford it. I experimented with poisons, but prefer the weapon damage enchant on my front bar instead of escapist poisons, but you could always go with that especially if you don't have a stun now we're going to go over the champion points in the blue tree just for your uh, knowledge here that this is the dynamic cp add-on that kind of shows the name um realize that damage reduction cps have been nerfed so i no longer really spec into that one that i spec into is single target healing so when I'm healing someone or myself, it's only myself. So I'd rather go this with a 10% rather than mitigation. Another one, believe it or not, that's big brain and super crazy is hope infusion. When you're under 50%, you or someone else, you're going to grant them minor heroism for one second for every 300 magic recovery you have. Remember how much magic recovery? Over 2,000. And it can happen every 10 seconds. So if you're playing solo, you're going to get minor heroism on top of major heroism, which is what Oaken Soul provides, giving you Dawnbreakers all the time. And then I go with Fighting Finesse, increasing my crit damage and crit healing done by 8%, which was nerfed a little bit. And then Masters of Arm, pretty balanced. It's going to increase our main spammable as well as some other things that we're doing. Moving over to the red tree, these are pretty obvious ones, but increase our max health. Armor Reduction. We're gonna go into Survivor Spite and get Pain's Refuge since I'm not running Extended Ritual, lower my damage when they're putting dots on me. And then of course we're running an Orc, so we wanna get as fast as possible with the Solarity, increasing our movement speed by 10%. And the Green Tree really doesn't affect performance much, but if you're playing in Cyrodiil, some that do. Gifted Rider, increasing your mount speed. War Mount, improve your mastery with mounts, removing all mount stamina costs outside of combat. And then Steed's Blessing. Again, increase movement speed out of combat, but it helps you zip around the map. And then uh, whatever you want, liquid efficiency just saves you a little bit of uh, resources and gold. Well, gang, that's the video. Hope you like this. I don't know even what to call this magic or stamina, but I started playing. I haven't even played the Necro very much. I've been enjoying this so much. So pick this up if you want something super simple. If you want to click one button and feel like an indomitable god, Oaken Soul. We have no idea if this is going to get nerfed or how it's going to go, but hopefully this give you some options and insights into what i'm using why two craftable sets a mythic and one shoulder piece and it's absolutely fun to play the templar again in groups solo or small groups also smash that thumbs up if you found this helpful let me know in the comment section if you like these uh one bar builds whether it's pve or pvp i'll keep cranking them out and of course check my website deltiasgaming.com if something changes i can always update the website not the videos and last plug i swear to god i'm about done watch me on twitch.tv slash deltiasgaming where i play interact with you the community live thank you